So let's look at some properties that functions might have. Uh, the first property we're going to discuss is something just called one-to-one. -one. And what that means is that uh, each element of T has, uh, is associated with at most one element of S. Okay, so we have a function f that goes from s into t, and uh, if it's one-to-one, -one, if each element of t is associated with more than one element of s. I'm emphasizing that because remember that f is a function if each element of s is associated with at most one element of t. Okay, so what we have is something like this. We have a set s, and we have a set t, and what we want is uh, this is the way that it should look like if it is uh, a function, right? So that each element of s is associated with the most one element of t. But in this case, it's one to one. And the reason is that each element of t is associated with the most one element of s. Note that there could be other elements of t. The important thing is that an element of t doesn't have two errors going into it, okay? All right, uh, now how would we say this in math? So uh, here's how we say this in math. Um, we're going to use kind of uh, the same trick that we used before because what we're trying to say is that there is a unique value in the set S that is associated with any uh, value in the um, set T. Um, I like to think of in terms of X and Y, so there's a unique X associated with each Y. So here's how we do that. Uh, we start out by trying to find two different Ys. So, so here's what we have, F of S1 and F of S2, right? And what we conclude is that they have to be identical. So uh, this is our trick that we've done. This is kind of a hack for uniqueness. Right? What we do is we say, well, let's try to find two. Right? And that's what we're doing here. And then show that uh, they're actually equal. So if I find two things, I discover that it's actually the same one. Right? That means that there can only be one because I can't actually get one and something else. So, so that's our standard hack for, for equality, and we use it here again. So if you find uh, two points, f of s1 is equal to f of s2, then actually they're the same point, s1 is equal to s2. So here are some examples of one-to-one -one functions. Uh, the function f of x is equal to 2x is one-to-one. -one. And why is that? Well, if I have, uh, for example, a number in the, in, the, in the codomain, let's say, for example, 6, then there's actually only one value of x such that 2x is equal to 6, namely 3. So that's why this is 1 to 1. f of x is equal to x cubed is also a 1 to 1 function, right? Uh, and again, if I have um, any, any number, such as, for example, 8, right, then there's only one number such that x cubed is equal to 8, and that's x equal to 2. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, x squared is not one-to-one -one because uh, I have here two numbers, minus one and one, that uh, f maps both of those to one. Okay. So uh, I want to show you this kind of a uh, picture because we have here x squared. Okay. We have here uh, 2x and we have here x cubed, roughly speaking. Okay. So um, we talked about the vertical line test which lets us know whether something is a function. So vertical line, is it a function? But there's also the horizontal line test. And that lets us know, is it one-to-one? -one, right? uh, only apply the horizontal line test if you already know that you're dealing with a function. So in this case, when I apply the horizontal line test, I actually find two values that it intersects. So this is not a function. In here, no matter where I draw my horizontal line, I only ever find one value, so this is a function. And on this one again, I only ever find one value, so this is a function, right? So, you know, that's, that's informal, right? That's a way to, to determine from a graph. Uh, we'll talk about how to do it in a, in a, in a proof setting uh, in just a second. Okay. Uh, by the way, here's a function that is also not one-to-one. -one. This is a different kind of function because it doesn't have numbers, okay? So I can't quite graph it. But uh, the reason that it's not a function is right here, cat3 and dog3. So that gives me two different x values that have the same y value, right? That's, uh, that's what keeps it from being one-to-one. Uh, uh, -one. Okay, so, so let's actually try to prove one of these things. So uh, we have here the function f of x equals 2x and over the integers, and that should be one-to-one, -one, okay? So, here is what we need to prove. Okay, 
So if I have uh, two different x values, right? Uh, if they have the same y value, so if f of x is equal to f of x2, then in fact the two of them have to be equal, right? And remember, this is just our usual trick for um, uniqueness, right? If you find two, they're actually equal, okay? So, so we remove the quantifiers and keep the original variables. Then we have f of x1 equals f of x2 implies that x1 is equal to x2, right? That's what we need to prove. That makes sense. And uh, how do we go about doing that? Well, we're going to have to use the definition of f, right? So what we'll say is f of x1, that's just 2x1. f of x2 is 2x2. So 2x1 equals 2x2 implies that x1 equals x2. And this is actually true, right? Uh, if we're talking about the integers, then we need something called the quotient remainder theorem, which keeps coming up. It's an important theorem, right? And, um, and for the integers, that's what lets us know that I can actually essentially cancel out the two. If you're talking about the real numbers, then there's a more direct cancellation theorem called the left multiplicative cancellation theorem. And that one tells us that we've canceled it too. But as far as we're concerned, this is just properties of numbers, right? Because our course is on discrete math. It is not on a number theory or real analysis, okay? So, so this is good enough. So this is how we prove this particular property of uh, this function. We know that it's one-to-one -one because f of x1 equals f of x2 implies x1 equals x2.